All right, it's time for an upgrade. Going to get rid of this old school Sears Craftsman seven and a quarter 12 amp circ saw. It weighs a ton and upgrade it for this Craftsman brushless seven and a quarter battery powered circ saw. Let's check it out. want to see eclectic handyman and today as i mentioned i'm going to go ahead and get rid of this older style cirque saw it still works really well nothing wrong with the motor whatever but it's cutting accuracy which everybody knows the guide is not exact but it looks like it may have been bent a little bit this was always reconditioned it's great for rip cuts and like osb and stuff where you don't have to be accurate but if you're trying to cut across a line and just for the portability, it wasn't that accurate. So maybe I'll keep it around. Maybe I'll donate it to Habitat for Humanity. Let somebody else get a shot at using this one. And now I'm going to upgrade to this Craftsman brushless seven and a quarter circ saw. And I got this deal on Amazon. This was $150 total. So it's for the brushless, again, Craftsman tool only, but it also came with a charger and two four amp batteries. Now this is an amazing deal. Technically, what ended up happening is after purchasing it, these are two separate line items. So this one ended up being $70 and that ended up being $80. And the fact that that retails for $150 and this one retails for $105 to $150 is an absolutely fantastic deal. Technically, that's also known as a hack deal because if either one of these were returned because they're separate line items, you could keep the item that you wanted and keep it at that reduced cost because alone you couldn't get these for that price. Now, I already have a four amp battery, which is actually charging right over there. And because I don't use a lot of tools simultaneously, I'm not sure about the full need for that many batteries, but it's still nice to have, you know, for around the house so you're not chasing for that one battery. So let's take a look at a few of these features, get it out of the box, and then we'll try it out. So. As with most of these, or all of these, I believe have the three-year limited warranty on it. That's great. It's brushless, so it's going to be better than a brushed motor. Has two and nine-sixteenths cut depth, so keep that in mind. 56-degree bevel capacity. That's fantastic. Again, uses the V20 lithium-ion battery series, so you could use the 2-amp, 4-amp, 6-amp. I believe they even have a 9-amp in the Craftsman. Couple of the other features to highlight, it's 5,000 RPM, has an aluminum shoe on it, electronic brake. Now, I like this one, the LED light, because that's gonna, again, compared to my old saw, which was completely manual, I really like that on my miter saw, so we'll see how that works. Tool-free bevel capacity, that's nice. Again, seven and a quarter blade, should come with a rip blade, probably, it looks like 24 tooth. So that's pretty nice and nice contoured handle and then the battery goes on it as well. All right, let's get this out of the box and check it out. Okay, a couple of first impressions. One, that's probably the easiest to remove a tool from a box that I've ever had. That was super simple. Comes again with a 24 tooth blade for it. That's great, you don't have to buy one right away. And it also comes with the instruction manual. One tip, seems obvious, but just in case, keep the manual in the box just in case you need to exercise that three year warranty and you'll have everything that you need to send back in. All right, so taking a look at it, one of the things that's amazing, this is super light compared to that dinosaur circular saw I had. It is, I, I, I can't tell exactly, but it's probably half or at least a third less in weight. It's so much easier to handle. We've got that again, that aluminum shoe with the markings on it. I can just tell that the quality is pretty nice for what you got. You got a nice handle right here. Uh, a couple of things, you know, you've got the blade retracting. I mean, very typical Cirque saw right here. We've got the bevel adjustment. So if you loosen that, then you can do that if you need. Now, for me personally, I prefer the miter saw that has the bevel on it, but there are some times like if you need to be portable and you don't have that saw with you, you've got to get savvy with this. So I may not use that feature. This is more for uh, long rip cuts on deck boards that uh, uh, hopefully I'll make another video on how to do that. And I needed that, but 
again, you have that ability for the adjustment. One of the things that I really like about this too is if this gets out of alignment, you do have the ability to have an adjustable shoe to realign it with a with a square to make sure that the angle is correct and everything is in proper adjustment. My old one did not have that, so I like that capability as well. All right, let's go ahead and throw the blade on there. What this is, is it's a uh, six millimeter. You've got this uh, right here on the bevel. There is a locking mechanism that you hold with your finger. This is very standard. So you put it in there like that, and then you go ahead and loosen. That wasn't too difficult at all. Again, with my other finger, I'm depressing that button. Once it's loose, you should be able to get that out of there. So you're gonna have the bolt, and also don't forget to take off this retaining washer right here. Get the blade, whichever blade you want. I kind of wish it came with a 40 tooth, which is more general purpose, but that's okay. Uh, I have one of those if I need it. All right, we'll take that off. And again, pretty standard stuff here. We're gonna put the blade on. Remember the teeth point upward just in case you get confused on which side goes to which. Now that washer that pulled off in the middle do remember it's two pieces like this and one does go on the inside if you get confused this raised edge is the part that goes on the inside and this is the one that rotates there will already be some grease on it so if those stuck together like it did with mine make sure you put that on the inside or the blade will be inset and the saw will actually not work all right so at this point retract the blade guard you can slip the blade right up inside it will fit on this very nicely and then <clears throat> making sure that it's flush you'll put this retaining washer back on there are grooves that align so it's just like that this saw has clockwise traditional threads for tightening you may see on some like miter saws or some old cirque saws that they are reverse threads and then once again, once we got it just a little bit snug, I'm going to go ahead and depress that blade lock again. At this point, I don't need that retracted anymore. It might move a little bit. My finger depresses. We can tighten this down. You don't have to go crazy. Make sure it's solid. You can let go. One thing to note, there is an Allen key tool that's used for this. So if you're portable, I just happen to be here on the workbench and already had this six millimeter you know from my jeg set back there so now we've got it set let's put a battery in just make sure it works all right so i got my four amp battery fully charged on this model you will uh for safety release the electronic brake you just hold either side of that to be able to use it so i'll just hold one side to unlock it and then we'll go ahead and test it out Wow, so different feeling. I've never used a portable version of one of these. I've always used the, uh, again, the corded version. So I wanna get it out there and check it out. I can already see that LED light. Now, one thing I realized, I, I may have not indicated earlier, this is just a visual light. It's not like a cut line light. So we will still need to use this notch and we'll see, the, again, the zero line, how accurate that is. You have to use some judgment. Always look at where the blade is for making cuts, but we are all set up. All right, nothing left to do but test it out. All right, I got some scrap wood here that I'm gonna cut for uh, the top of my sawhorses. So again, I've got this zero degree indicator here that should be on the line. So everything to the left will be the good piece and then the rest is scrap. I've also set the depth adjustment, which you can do right here to make sure that my blade is exactly right below. Very nice. I can tell you right now, it cut exactly along that line. So it's well calibrated, although you can adjust the shoe again but it's well calibrated. That was a very nice cut, real easily. Went right through, no problems at all. You can see, get a little bit of that Craftsman Red from the saw blade on that. So we'll try this out one more time. Line it up, as always. Always make sure to wear 
safety glasses. And there you have it. Nice, smooth cut. Again, a little bit of that red from the blade. That's awesome. Letting us know we're using the Craftsman Cirque Saw. So, I like it. I especially like how lightweight it is. So, I think it's definitely worth adding to the cordless line if you haven't already. Same as me, if you were using a old corded circular saw, I think this is a tremendous option. Seems to have great power. Easily switch the blades, lots of options on it, and not a major investment. Let me know what you think if you have this, or maybe a competing brand, and what you think about some of the features. Again, I think this is a worthwhile investment, and glad I got such a great deal on Amazon. If you like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up, put a comment below, and until next time, this is the Eclectic Candyman. We'll see you later.